Hey, if you love God, you need to know why you need to be imitators of God in today's sharing. Hi, my name is Alvin and welcome to Gather Faith. Today, we're going to share a great message of why do you need to be imitators of God. And if you love Christian messages just like this, do consider to follow us on YouTube and TikTok in the description below. So without further ado, let's pray and start. Father, I want to pray whoever listens to this message right now in the name of Jesus. Father, may you bless them and they may know how to be imitators of you so that we can be a child of God today. Amen. So basically, uh, there was a letter uh, written from Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 to 21 from Paul to believers, all right, to imitate uh, Christ. You know, what's interesting is that many uh, messages that I hear today, a lot of people don't realize the letters in the Bible um, written by Paul were mainly written for believers to hear. All right, it's not for non-believers, but strangely, we use it a lot for non-believers, as if it's for them. But actually, this is for believers like you and I who have already accepted Jesus Christ. So if that's you, all right, this message is for you. Okay. So in case you don't know the meaning of imitator from Cambridge Dictionary, it says here, a person who copies someone or something that they think is a good thing. All right, that's the uh, circular explanation <laughs> all right but in the greek uh it's different all right imitators means imita and and the root word uh, of that is actually mimic all right and basically what you're trying to say is to have positive ideas of copying and admired uh mentor all right which is our lord jesus christ all right and what's interesting is this word has been used in greek uh, seven times all right, in the New Testament. So it's mentioned many times means it's important. Okay. So without further, let's read. All right. Therefore, all right, be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up all right, for us an offering and a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. This is in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. Well, you learn and imitate actually most of the time, you know, when we were young from our parents, all right? As young children, you learn everything from our parents, all right? We might even uh, sometimes even pretend to be them and copy their behaviors, you know, of your parents, all right? So Paul is saying here, we need to imitate Jesus today because why? We are a child of God. We are children of God. So we therefore need to imitate our Father in heaven and also Jesus as an example today. But sadly, not many people today do that. Uh, if you are, congratulations, that's good for you. But if you are not, you know, this time for a wake-up call for you. So how do you imitate uh, God? Well, first of all, you need to walk uh, in love, just as how Christ has loved you. You know, many times, sometimes uh, Christians are, uh, I would say I've been Christian for many years, but unfortunately not every Christian um, shows the kind of love that they're expected to, uh, just as what Christ uh, asks us to. So please forgive them, you know, if they are not, but continue to pray for them and continue to show love to as many people as you can, especially to those uh, that is hard to love, like the people who betray you or your enemies. All right. So how, you know, can you uh, imitate God? All right. Uh, so to read on, but sexual immorality or any impurity or greed must not be even be mentioned among you as Christians, as is proper among saints. So what's interesting is that right now in year this current year 2021, as I'm recording this video, uh, many people uh, ignore this, which is uh, sexual immorality is actually the selling of or sexual purity involve any kind of sexual expression outside the boundaries of the biblical bible from matthew chapter 19 verse 4 to 5 all right that's include all right sex outside marriage this includes seeing porn and last food activities so that if you're wondering why you know pastors always tell us uh, not to have uh, sex outside marriage uh, and not do all these things because the bible says so you know and told us not to do these things but unfortunately in today's modern world a lot of people uh, don't care and they break all those rules okay uh, so sexual immorality or any impurity or greed must not be mentioned among you so it should not even be an activity that is among us even today in modern world uh, so we're supposed to stay pure in the eyes of god that's how we imitate god 
all right, you're supposed to avoid sexual immorality and greed and imp- and any point of things, you know. And what's in, what's very sad right now, we have um, we have uh, prosperity gospel, all right, and it's very obvious that the doctrine in prosperity gospel is focused more on greed. All right, and the needs of you, blessings, and all that. All right, there's nothing wrong in blessing, but if you believe in Jesus just for blessing, something is very wrong. So what happened is that we need to avoid sin, avoid greed, and we should not be greedy. You know, I want more wealth and fame. I got, I, I got to be honest. Uh, when I was a new believer, and I wasn't a very strong Christian, I used to, um worship money a lot and that was a problem for me uh, for a very long time and it's only until when I start to uh, know God more and trust Him more as in actually trust Him and do uh, what He actually says I learn to be more humble and learn not to uh, ask for too much things even when suffering comes I still praise God even if there's no money I will still praise God so my challenge to you is will you still praise God even though you are not doing well or you are suffering today okay so however Paul did not stop there he actually tells us much more things and he says this there, there must be no filthiness foolish talk vulgar joking uh, which is not fitting but rather giving of thanks so my question to you is when was the last time you actually give thanks to something you know and uh, when was the last time you actually do talk about bad things about other people like rumors or vulgar language you know that's not supposed to be happening among Christians but sadly today uh, there are many people who do this even though they say they are Christians so if you are doing that I hope that this message will wake you up and want to encourage you to repent from those things that you've been doing all this time and realize that this is not the way to imitate God even though you've been a Christian for many years. Okay? So no filthiness, no foolish talk or vulgar joking. So what does it mean? It means no dirty talking, no talking behind other people, no rumors, no foolish talking. You know, in the <laughs> during Jesus' time, Paul time, we really got this problem even now today also we have this same problem so no vulgar language no cursing you know so why why is all this uh, uh, not allowed and why is it important to you if you are a Christian today for for this you know with certainty that no sexual immorality or impure or greedy person which amounts to their daughter has an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God uh, what he's trying to say here in simple terms is that as long as you do sexual immorality or impure or you are a greedy person all right, you claim that you want to believe God because you'll be blessed I want to be very rich you know I, I want to be you know uh, wealthy <laughs> you know that's obviously greed don't try to deny it or maybe you keep on laughing all right the, the honest truth is that it says that you you all right as a Christian will not inherit the kingdom of Christ and God so we think oh no am I not safe well I don't know if you continue to to do those things as mentioned here maybe you're actually not safe I don't know it's possible because that's why it says that it's kind of scary to think you know that we take it for granted as if uh, God always forgive us we are always safe once safe always safe some people claim that but we have verses like this that warn us that you know you shouldn't take your life so easy and you should take God more seriously because he warned us if you continue to do these things you know you will not inherit the kingdom of Christ and God up to you to interpret what it means I don't want to say so much everyone will have a different opinion all right so however Paul did not stop there uh Paul actually warned us further all right it says here see that no one deceive you including myself with empty words for because of these things which is the sexual immorality and the greed uh, the wrath of God comes upon the son of those who are disobedient so if you disobey God you continue to talk trash talk rumors vulgar language or maybe become greedy right so if you disobey right the wrath of God will come upon you this is a promise wow wow that's scary right I don't know if you are Waken by these words, but I hope you are, and I hope that these words will make you want to repent, you know, and say sorry to the Lord that you have done such things. I am very sure you have done these type of things. I myself have done these things as well. Alright, that's why Paul says this further to encourage us today. 
Therefore, do not become partners with them, which is basically the you know sexual immorality and the greed. For you were once in darkness last time before Christ. We used to be greedy, we used to talk trash. But now that you have accepted you are the light you are in the Lord, you need to walk as children of light. So now that you start to realize, oh, that's what Paul is trying to say here. So how do you imitate God and be the light? A child of God is you should not be greedy, you should not be vulgar, and you should avoid sexual immorality in any form of lust whatsoever. Right? Why? Because for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. As you try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord, do not participate in the useless state of darkness, but instead even exposing them. All right. So what then should you be doing today? All right, to imitate God. All right, Paul has the answer as well. All right, so be careful how you walk, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of your time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of God is. So my question to you is that: <clears throat> Do you know what is the will of God in your life? All right, do you know? If you don't know, that's a problem. All right, you you must know. All right, if not, you've been a Christian for so many years and you do not know something is wrong somewhere. Okay, so he also mentions that on top of knowing the will, you also must always give thanks to God. Okay, in all things, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to our God Father and Father, and subject yourself to one another in fear of Christ today. And you know what's interesting? There is power, all right, in giving thanks in all things. In fact, uh, I learned this secret. Not say secret, lah. Actually, it's not really a secret. But I learned that in order to conquer greed and lust and all those things that we just read, we need to learn to give thanks. In literally everything, our career, our bank account, our house, our wife, our family, everything. We need to give thanks because if you don't learn to give thanks, you learn you will desire for more, and when you desire for more, that's how greed comes into play. You know, money cannot earn enough. I I can tell you, money can never earn. You think you? I know we all need money. I'm not saying we don't need money. We definitely need money to survive. I understand that, but where is your limit? You know, you should you always work just for money, or should you work just because you just want enough? And then you look at what God actually wants you to really do in your life. You know the problem with uh, many of us is that we don't really take God seriously until it's too late, or when you have no other choice, then you look to God. Unfortunately, most of us are like, including myself. Uh, I'm not perfect. I'm not saying I'm perfect, uh, but I'm trying to encourage you today that whatever it is, your career, give thanks. Your business, give thanks. You know, don't don't pray to God and ask God for blessing. If I would encourage you, try not to do that. Uh, I try not to pray God. You know, bless my business or pray God bless my career or bless my exam. You know, I I won't encourage. I'm not something not to do that. But I won't encourage you to do that. But instead, say God, I give thanks to this business that given to me. I give thanks for the exam that I'm going to take. I give thanks for this career that you're given to me. Start with this kind of prayer and and try that out, and you realize something. Will change. I don't know how to tell you, but you just try yourself, then you will experience what I'm trying to say. Okay, and then once you learn to give thanks, you will learn to be humble in all situation, regardless of career or money or whatever it is. And trust me, just try it. You you will you will realize it. All right, and and you will be reminded. You know what you should be doing, and、uh, which is to fear, uh, Christ today. The point is, many of us today. Uh, do not fear Christ enough, and we need to behave ourselves, or even bother to know, you know, the will of God in their lives. So I pray whatever I share today, you know, that will change today, and I hope to do that by praying with you right now. If you are watching to this point, this video, and I want to pray for you. So if you think you need to repent from your sins, from your lust, from your greed, and all that. You know, just close your eyes and pray for your father. I want to pray right now in the name of Jesus. I'm pray for my brothers, sisters right now. Father, I pray that whatever I share and say will transform them today, right now, in the name of Jesus. And Father, I pray that they will know you more deeply today and know that what they have done in the past is wrong. Father, I pray. 
that they will learn to be humble today and be thankful for what they already have. Father, I pray you forgive them as you have promised from all the things they have said to other people and all the bad things they have done and all the greed that they have done in the past. Father, may you forgive them right now in the name of Jesus and if you believe as well, Amen, Amen. And I believe the Lord has forgiven you because that's the promise. If you are sincere in your heart, you confess with your mouth, you know, He will forgive you. Well, I encourage you, after this video, once you stop, go and pray to God yourself. Pray to Jesus. Say, Lord, sorry that I've done this, this, this. Sorry I said this, this, this. You know, and ask Him to forgive you. And He will forgive you. I hope you enjoyed this message. If you have benefit from it, do consider to subscribe to this channel. And also share this video with your friends to encourage them to be imitators of God today. My name is Alvin. God bless. I hope to see you again in the next video.